All right, good, I don't know, should I say good evening, good morning? <laughs> it's like two in the morning, about a little bit after two in the morning. And I realized something. Um, for those of you out there who, like myself, have uh, come to realizations about yourself, your life, um, who, who people that you've been raised by aren't your birth parents and these people aren't your family and um, they've been doing things to you to uh, program you to their way of being and so on and so forth to keep you from yourself to keep you from realizing yourself for whatever the reason okay um, you may have like myself see whether you know that you have been traumatized or not okay um, for example if something happened to you like for myself I realized and recognized okay this woman that raised me is not my mother but it seems as though I've been with her since I was an infant However, and I, I pretty much talked about it in a video I did, a tarot reading, and I can't remember which one. Um, it is uh, traumatizing for a, a person to be pulled away from the person who... Uh, Formed them and knit them in the womb, basically who made them, all right? Um, what you, you might have been an infant, it doesn't matter. You know, infants aren't stupid and dumb and just blind and don't know nothing. The body knows, the mind knows, the soul knows, the spirit knows, okay? So that is traumatizing. And then you live this life where you're like, okay, you know something is off, something is not right. Now, this has been my experience, okay? You know something was off, something was not right. Okay, and then however many years later you've come to find out, okay, and just besides the fact of maybe, um, and like me, I've always felt like the black sheep, and I made that known, oh no, and of course I was, you know, there was gaslighting, oh no, we don't look at you differently, we don't think of you differently, and well, I don't know about that one, but I don't, eh, yes you do. Okay, so where your uh, uh, cries were not really heard, the, you know, of course, these things were done on purpose. Okay, you may have developed a character in order to survive the trauma. All right, now, like for myself, one thing that I developed was a sense of humor. I look back at pictures of myself when I was a little girl. I mean, very, very small. And I always had this very serious look on my face. And I remember when I used to take pictures, one thing, you know, people always say to me, smile, smile, why don't you smile, smile. I remember my dad saying it. I don't remember the lady who raised me saying it much, but I, I remember him saying it, but he wasn't the only person. So finally I got to the point where I was like, okay, damn it, I'll smile. You know, because to me, and I remember how, what I thought and what I felt. Nobody can tell me what my thoughts were, what my feelings were. But I do remember thinking to myself that what, do I, what am I smiling for? Why do you have to smile for a picture? I thought it was silly. In a way, I, th I think I thought, kind of thought it was asinine. I may not have used the word asinine, hadn't heard the word at that, you know, at that point. But I just thought it was silly. I mean, I was very small, but I started doing it. Well, it didn't take me long to realize that the world that I was living in was not the world that I was supposed to be living in. And I couldn't figure out why am I here? Why am I with, you know, uh, these people? I don't belong here. I don't know where I, where I was supposed to be. I just knew that wasn't it. Okay. 
So yeah, I was a black sheep. Okay. Um sibling made it clear he really didn't care for me too much. <laughs> Okay, uh, and I always felt like the woman who raised me, I used to just really feel like she likes him more than she liked me. She don't like me, she like him, you know. Uh, or why, you know, I um, was raised in church. I mean, like, ra went raised in church. Um, <clears throat> had to be involved, had to be there every Sunday morning, the whole nine. Well, that little church I was raised in, I mentioned it as my great-grandfather's church. It didn't matter whether it was his church or not. Now, he wasn't living. I mean, he died when I was, they say he died when I was one years old. I was supposedly the last uh, child that he christened, okay? He was blind. He couldn't see me, and I asked why he was blind. I was told from, they don't know why. They think he might have had diabetes from some, you know, complications with that, okay, that was not treated. But nevertheless... Listen, my quote unquote peers at that church, well, it, they were not nice to me at all. I remember very young, I remember very, very, very young. Their, uh, and I'm not saying every single one of them, but I remember very young their mistreatment of me. And I couldn't figure out what did I do to them. But see, this was, at, at, I, I, even though I was young and I remember thinking to myself, what did I do to them? I was so used to that kind of thing at that point. Looking around thinking, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? What did I do to this person? What did I do to that person? What did I do to them? Okay. Now, it's interesting because sometimes I listen to some of the readers. And they have, they talk about people who are going through these things and that some people may have been kidnapped. And I think to myself, why the fuck would people kidnap some a child and then treat them like shit? The fuck did you want them for? The hell with all this evil going on with the sacrifice and the, you know God only knows. Okay, um, I don't believe that was my situation. I just think I was the child of someone that um, my father made me with uh, someone that wasn't his wife. Okay, and I'm gonna leave that at that. Okay, and. Um, was raised was supposed, probably, I don't know if he was supposed to raise me or not, but nevertheless, he left me with his wife. <laughs> okay, but anyway, I don't know. I think there was money, so on and so forth. But we're gonna just keep on going. I'm not gonna get into the details of that. But what I noticed that I had done because I was so busy trying to fit in because I couldn't figure out why I fit out or why I didn't fit. Which is strange. I mean, it was just the strangest feeling. And always be, have a mind of what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong from a very young age? And then there were times where I felt I didn't feel that. And I would kind of think to myself, okay, maybe they're accepting me now. Me, me me okay and then they would get back into whatever it was that was making me uncomfortable well you know for those people that grow up in church I mean grow up in church okay gotta be there that's like your second home okay especially like a little small church I'm not talking about like these big mega churches nowadays you know small church and people know each other and they basically all hell have to fa you know, they family there, the, 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 the other person's family is there, everybody's there and family is there, okay? And they all end up intermingling, intermarrying and whatnot and just be all fucking intertwined and whatnot. Okay. Um, but it, it becomes like your home here. And again, I, I, shit, I'm hearing the word distress. I probably was under some d distress, okay? Trauma and the like. But what a person will do is sometimes they will, you know, we've heard about people suppressing things where they have no memory of things anymore and so on and so forth. But sometimes what people will do is they will develop a, like I said, a character, develop something about themselves to make them fit to survive. I mean, because you know the mind, you know, human, the human wants to survive. 
the situation, whatever the situation may be. You know, if you're if you're out there in the wild, if that is you know the, the your condition, the condition. Okay, you're going to do what you have to do to not only adapt to it, but you know to survive it as well. So one thing that I had done was I think I developed. I, well, not I think I developed a sense of humor. I don't think that if I was raised. Uh, probably with the woman who uh, created me, okay, um, or in uh, maybe I should just say, I don't know. I don't know what that would have, situation would have been like. I can't really speak to it. But I think if I was raised in the proper uh, conditions, okay, or the appropriate conditions for myself, I probably wouldn't have been developed that sense of humor. And, uh, you know, I just got to the point sometimes where I'll just be downright silly. Now y'all listen to some of my videos. Sometimes I get into that mood, that real silly mood, okay? But what I, I um, see that what it did for me was it helped me to cope we all have some kind of coping mechanism. Ain't no need for nobody out there to act like they don't. Okay? Go read a goddamn book and come into the reality of yourself and quit acting like you so damn um, ain't nothing wrong with me. Okay? Now, I know what I have said. I made some points about perfection. And when I say that, when I say we are perfect, I am perfect, we are perfect. I am talking about in the uh, the, um, the the soul, the divine self. It is. Be walking around talking about, you know, goddamn God or goddess. And then say, but I ain't perfect. Like I said, that's a, that's a program. To say your affirmations, I am, but then say I'm not. That that's a program, okay. I'm talking about the divine self, and this is, I would think, where um, we are trying to get to 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 come into our divine self, our divine being, which is our true self. I'm here in True North. I don't know anything about astrology, but I do. Uh, some readers I listen to, they do uh, speak of astrology. I mean. Um, Nah, I was going to say I know a little bit when I hear him talking about it, but I, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what y'all be talking about because I have not studied it, but I don't criticize it or anything like that. I just don't know it, but I, I have just some teeny, 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 super teeny, tiny uh, working knowledge, working knowledge of it. Like when you talk about, you know, your, your North, your North node and, and so on and so forth. Okay. And living in your South node and so forth, just from listening Okay, but not from any kind of study I've done or anything, okay? And the readers I've listened to are pretty much in agreement with that. Now, when you get talking about me, uh, well, I can't even speak to it, but some of the other shit, I'm, I don't know what, the, what you're talking about. And um, meaning I, I don't have a knowledge of it, all right? But anyway, yes, we, you know, we you're trying to remember who we are, okay? We've been, the soul, as I understand it, has been... Um, are captured okay and placed in these vessels which does what it limits us now we are in a limited space okay and i did some um i believe it's in hinduism where it talks about it i did some stu stu uh, studies here on hinduism um on my ch on this channel okay um where it talks about how we uh are limited because we are, yes, trapped here in this flesh, whether, at, okay, you gender, I am a female, okay, uh, and not just a female, but a human female, meaning I cannot know or have the experiences of a uh, human male, okay, um, my... <laughs> ethnicity or race or skin color um, is this limiting me to be having a full understanding and knowledge of that a person that is the uh, maybe a different of a different race of a different ethnicity we are limited I'm limited in that I am this person's um, child I'm in this particular bloodline okay we're talking about a 3D thing now Okay, so I cannot know fully and understand um, someone else. Now, 
you don't need to do no deep study in Hinduism. I believe it's Hinduism, not Buddhism. You don't need to do no deep study in Hinduism to to that's just commonsensical. Okay, we talk about the boxes that we're putting. Yeah, literally. The human vessel in and of itself is a box that the soul has been placed in. Okay? Now, for nefarious purposes, maybe so. I'm not, maybe no, I don't know. You know, we there's so many theories and ideas and whatnot about our being here. We chose to come here. We was captured, you know, so on. That we're the, that we are actually the, uh, the, the um, in a sense, parental gods to those gods who captured us and put us in these, uh, in this box here, this vessel that we call the human body, this flesh and placed us here in this false system, this illusion here that we call 3D, that we find in the Nag Hammadi, that we find uh, the story of that in itself in the Nag Hammadi, which I read that on this channel. I read that story on this channel. Okay. Now I read a couple stories out of that. I can't remember the specific one and the false God. Okay. Uh, who thought, okay, that he was the only God, the God, uh, the child, the, the, uh, that, that the Pista Sophia brought forth. Okay. Without a consort. And here he was alone in the dark and said, you know, that, Basically, that he was God, that he was all powerful, and she had to tell him, "No, nah, baby, you're wrong." And that the light, that the world and realm that he was in, that dark was just a shadow of the real world. Okay, and he created this false illusion, this uh, um, like a carbon copy. Okay, of what was real, and here we are captured down in it. Okay. Now, what I was saying was, I don't know how I got off all that, into all that, but it, hopefully it all come together. So what I was saying was that for myself, what I had done, and I didn't realize I did it, but shit, I knew I had to uh, survive here in this realm that I was placed in where it seemed like, you know... The, my encounters was just like everybody looking at me like I'm strange or everybody looking at me like you don't belong here why are you know who are you why are you here now ain't no need to nobody who has known me cause y'all listen I don't give a damn what the view numbers on my channel says I'm not moved by that and your web of lies. A false matrix system. So when they going to tell you the truth? And if they don't want the truth to be told. They will play on your humanity. And your fucking emotions. So, um, okay. So, um, as I was saying, um, as somebody sends me some kind of a request for something, as I'm speaking these things, come on now. Come on, Matrix, the movie, they showed you the shit. They showed you how it worked. The Truman Show, they showed you how the shit worked. <laughs> and don't even nobody be surprised by shit. They showed you. We're telling you. We have told you. And there have been other movies, television shows, books, religion, so on and so forth to tell you this is what it is is even the quote unquote the person that the people that are doing it the quote unquote enemy if that's what you want to call it he has shown you she whatever it is has shown you i am showing you what i am doing so ain't no need to be no, nobody be surprised by nothing okay but as i was saying okay so i uh again because again you know i had to I gotta live amongst this. See the human again. The human 
aspect of ourselves seeks to continue to live, to survive. And it will do whatever is necessary to adapt to its surroundings and its conditions in order for it to survive. Okay. Again, the book is in a book. For those that think they know something and don't know shit. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I I I hate to be like that sometimes, but I, I actually don't. Because people just, you know, jibber jabber. And want to attack. And ain't nobody know ain't no ain't no need for nobody to think I'm talking about specifically about them. Like the world revolves simply around you. This is, these are things that human beings do. And these are things that human beings have been conditioned to do by forces greater than them. And don't even realize that they are being used and that they are being treated. Because this thing right here, what I'm saying, this is, this is, well, I get to that. Okay. But anyway, like I was saying, okay. So one thing that I did, again, back to it, was developed a sense of humor. Hell, better to laugh than to fucking cry about the shit. Better to laugh than to cry. So that was what I did for myself. Now for those of you, because it, and, um, you know, I, 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 I listen to people's stories I, when I watch their videos and whatnot and the stories that they share and, and the things that have happened and occurred in their life. Okay. But for those of you who may have been raised by some nefarious folk and false folk who you didn't fucking belong to. What you may find that you have done is you take on the characteristics of those who, whether they were uh, uh, benevolent or malevolent to you or not, who, who you still, in a sense, suckled at their breasts, even if you didn't literally suckle at their breasts, because I wasn't breastfed. I remember I asked when I was younger, did you breastfed me, me, mommy? No. Did you breastfeed the sibling? Yes. How come you didn't breastfeed feed me? And then some kind of excuse that didn't even really fit. And I might have been young, but I wasn't dumb. The response made me look like, huh? Okay. But anyway, <laughs> so you can take on those person characteristics. You can take on their mannerisms even. You can even take on some of their facial expressions. And sometimes these people, you know, I talk about black magic witchcraft, they put their energy on you for whatever reason. But hell, their energy going to be on you any, any damn way because you've been around them all the damn time. You eat what they eat. You eat with them at their table. You eat the food that they cook by their hands. You wear the clothes that they think you should fucking wear. You read the books that they think you should fucking uh, read. You go to the schools that they think you should uh, go to. You walk the walk and talk the talk. Okay, here we go with another uh, uh, notification. Okay. You walk the walk and you talk the talk that they think you should walk and talk because this is what families do. These are what uh, this is. These are what human beings do with humans. They train them what in the way that they should go in the way that they think they should go. And you become that. Whether you're meant to be that or not. So now you have, you, not only have you, uh, are taking, you take, in a sense you're taking on a whole, a false persona. I, I, I talked about the name. I did a video, a tarot reading called The Name. 
And I think I even did one of these talks one time at night where I talked about that. Well, hell, there's a woman named that the birth mother, my birth mother, gave me. I know the name she gave me. And this ain't it. So you have this whole identity, this whole false self. Now, hell, even if I was raised in the quote-unquote right situation or whatever that would have been, the right condition, it still would have been a false because we're living in a false realm, an illusion. And that illusion is strong than a motherfucker. Here, the matrix itself, okay, that we call this matrix reality, if that's what it's called, okay, um, is false. It's like, uh, you know how they have um, subcultures, the sub of the greater. Then you had these little sub matrices of the greater. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so you take on these energies that don't belong to you. And then you get to this place where you find out the truth. Some never do, some do. And you are swimming through the muddy fucking water. Thank God you found out. But now you're swimming, swimming through the, uh, you know, the murky ass water. Okay. To find your true self. And release those nasty, negative energies that were never yours. And you might find yourself mixed up at times. You might find yourself trying to figure it out at times. You might try find yourself confused at times. And here you beating yourself up because of something that was done to you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we're not responsible for uh, that. We hold no responsibility. But I don't know how much. Because how can you make, I'll just say, quality choices and decisions when from your infancy you were placed in a whole world and realm that was now I know for me okay I know a couple of other readers I listen to too based off their story and they, they have spoken to this to a degree and you place in a realm that is the exact opposite. The exact opposite of where you should have been. From one fucking extreme to another. And it's like for myself, when I came to this realization, I looked and realized, well, God damn, no wonder. No wonder. No wonder it was so weird. No wonder it was so strange. No wonder I was looked at like, why are you here? You don't belong here. And that was the energy that was thrown at me constantly. Because people will have you, they see, they want you to think and believe something wrong with you. I'm not talking about everyone that you encounter who may be looking at you like, hmm, they're different. Why are they here? They don't belong here. Actually, I had a person who was bold enough to say that to me. But she wasn't saying it in any kind of uh, um, condescending way or hurtful way. You know, she just looked at me one day. and It was uh, something I was a part of. And I was talking to her after uh, a particular event that we had. And she just looked at me finally. She said, why are you here? And I looked at her and was like, well, what do you mean? She said, you're not supposed to be here. Now, I was uh, much younger. I don't know what the hell was going on. But I, I, was, I was much younger, but I was old enough to have a tr work did whatever I needed to do to put myself in this world that I had been placed in and to say okay this fit I'm, I'm you know I'm gonna try to make this this is okay <laughs> you understand what I'm saying it's still uncompletely fit but it, it you know it's better than it was and she just you are not supposed to be here and I, I was like well what do you mean she said this you're, you're not supposed to be here this is not your place where are you supposed to be 
And I looked at her and I said, I don't know. I know what you're saying. I said, but I don't know. You know, again, she it wasn't nothing nasty, nothing mean, nothing kind of said, nothing hurtful. She just had some damn sense and was and was not afraid like most people are to speak to it. Cause he, he for those who who they, if they go say something, the ones that's damn sure they got folks that's afraid that ain't gonna say anything. But then you have folks that's afraid who are th- their fear is intimidation because they don't understand. You don't fit. I don't know how to work with you. You don't belong in this place in this space. I don't know how to work with you. Okay, so they'll be nasty and mean and you know all of that type of craziness. A bully you to just to try to get you out and away because. Maybe they're intimidated or they feel like you just don't belong here. I don't know how to work with you. You make me uncomfortable, blah, 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 this, that. You're not like everybody else around here. Hmm. You feel that way. Shit. Think about the person who who you're doing it to. God damn. But anyway, I was just saying, you know, I was just realizing that you, you, again, you take on these energies of these people. In whose homes you were placed. And then you find out the truth. Maybe some folks were stolen. Maybe some was kidnapped. Maybe some, whatever the hell the case may be. I know one person said to me one time. Because their mother was a, a, a verbally abusive at least. You know. But supposedly he looked like his mother. And he said, you know, I, it was a curse. It's a curse that I got to look like her. Well, that was his, that was, she was his, I mean, uh, birth mother. But for those who weren't, and then you look up and realize, you know, like for myself, this woman ain't even my damn mother. And here she is doing black magic witchcraft and, you know, so on and so forth. They, they stole my money and, you know, all that, or, you know, whatever was left for me. Blah, blah, this, that, and the other. You got to look in the mirror. And then there are days you think, I wonder, is this her energy or is this mine? And she, because she was siphoning, these people were siphoning or taking away and harvesting off of me and my energy you know trying to switch roles and all of that type of shit there's just some things to think about you know and I find it interesting this whole phenomenon of the gang stalking and you know and all of this kind of craziness you know to the people that's um you know, quote unquote shows and the star seeds and all of this type of thing. And those, you know, the scriptures say many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. I'm trying to look at my time here. Okay. So. Some of those who got involved in these things to hurt and harm others. I know, I know, I know one particular person in particular who is not a part of this platform. It's called. But instead got involved in the mayhem here the group because of the human aspect of themselves that spoke to their uh, fear loathing insecurity so on and so forth tricked out of the you know tricked out of their chosenness tricked out of it tricked out of it.
because of the play again on the human aspect of the self <clears throat> you know like uh for those who are familiar with uh, Bobby Hemet and some others who say, be a God. Get out of your humanity. Out of the glamour of, 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 of humanity. Because your soul is not human. Your divine self is not human. That's what's played on the illusion of your true self. Because I'll use Hinduism, uh, uh, for example, again, reincarnation. If the soul can continue to reincarnate, when that's the soul, so I don't know, would you say the soul? But if you can reincarnate and you keep coming back as somebody different over and over again, then that tells you right there you are not that person. Now, some people may say, and I don't believe in it, I'm Christian. But even Jesus himself said, it is appointed to man once to die, not to live. Huh? What you mean? Once to die, who you are now, it will, that, that persona, that character will die. And if, if, if you reincarnate, then you will be different than who you are now. That one will die. Man, it is appointed to man once to die. And don't say it is appointed to man once to live. To only live once. Some of y'all will understand that. And for those who still follow in that line when Jesus, uh, was it after he was resurrected? He was talking to two men. Well, who was that? They told him. Then it wasn't one of them. He said that was Elijah and that was something reincarnated or something like that. I have to go look it up. But, or if it was, uh, yeah. One was Elijah and one was, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I can't remember who the other person was. But these were uh, men who, who, from the Old Testament, the prophets who had died. And didn't even say that John the Baptist was like a reincarnation of one of the old prophets. I have to go look it up. Ain't no need to Google. I got to look in the book itself. Because, you know, Google are going to put their propaganda on pages one and two. You gotta, probably got to go to page 50 or 60 or 100 to find the truth. Okay. But anyway. Um just wanted to say that slough off those energies those uh, things that don't belong to you that belong to those who were malicious to you and wanted to use you and siphon off of you and harvest your energy and rip your soul up out of you and all of that kind of shit who still want to fucking play with you because of their mental instability or because they're oh, some demon or some devil or whatever or just because they have to just win. Okay, whatever their issue and problem is that is not yours. You don't belong to them. Uh, that ain't a mama. She sounds just like her. Of course she would. She fed her. I, I went through all that already in the video. I don't have to repeat it. Of course, he would. Have to grow up in our thinking. Stop being so surface. 
and once again in our humanity and especially one that has been the humanity that has been trained to be low thinkers or not thinkers at all those those energies of those people will want to or those uh, spirits or whatever they are will want to stay on you and cling on to you to keep you from I keep hearing true north I, I keep hearing that but to keep you from your divine self your true divine self because see they ain't living in theirs they want to take you from yours and they sold theirs for trinkets for glamour humanity's sake for illusion, for falsehood. So they want to hold on. And they keep you from knowing yourself. Why? So they could keep feasting off of your greatness, off of yourself, off of your divinity, off of your truth. Because for whatever reason, they fail to believe in their own. And I'll tell you, I did a reading years ago for someone. Years, years, years. Long before I got on YouTube. Long before it was even a fucking thought to get on this platform. And this person asked me a question. Just a general reading. And I gave it to them. And it was magnificent. They wanted to know who they were. And I told them exactly... You know, it was when, uh, something along the lines of being the, the brightest star in the heavens, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And people need to get out of this thinking that, oh, it's only me. I'm the only as one. I'm the only as bright star. You get that reading, you think it's only you. How? It's ridiculous. All of the millions or billions of how many people roaming this earth. Whose whatever soul has been again trapped. Whose divinity has been trapped. And you're, the only, you're the only one, huh? But anyway. Well, this person laughed. Basically, they scoffed. Not at me. Well, you know, shit. I'm giving you the reading. I'm giving you the word. Of who you are. And it was beautiful. It was magnificent. But they laughed. They scoffed. And I heard. Because I thought to myself that they can't be laughing at that. I heard in my spirit. And that is why you will always suffer. And that person is suffering to this day. And they've been suffering. tricked out of their chosenness many are called few are chosen tricked right up out of it maybe the laugh and the scoffing was because I gave it maybe it had nothing to do with me I don't know that's that person's issue well what y'all say do your shadow work so you know exactly why why you're scoffing at the word that is coming to, to you from the most high about the truth of your self and your divine self and your divinity and your greatness and your magnificence. Why the fuck would you scoff at that for, for, trink for nothing trinkets in this false time and space? The mind. All is mental. I'm going to bed. Y'all have a great evening or morning. Peace.